Når man er bare det til vedding, ikke at spille det sang, de amen. So today we get to hear about St. John of God. His feast day is March 8th. And um, he's proof that anybody can become a saint. Uh, so that he's, he's the patron saint of people who can't do anything right or ever get their life together. <laughs> not really. I mean, I'm just kind of, that's not official, but it should be. And you'll, you'll find out. Um, so I, actually, this, I think this, uh, when we hear today about the life of St. John of God, any mothers out there who have sons that just can't do anything right or get things together, be, uh, f feel at peace. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> your salvation is possible. So uh, his early life, uh, he was born in Portugal in 1495 to devout parents. And uh, his trouble started when he was eight years old. Uh, his parents uh, had taken in this itinerant wandering preacher. And th th this preacher or priest uh, talked about all these wonders that were um, out there in the world in the year 1503. And so young eight-year-old eight year Saint John of God decides he wants to see these wonders. So he, um, he leaves with this priest and doesn't tell his parents. Essentially, he runs away from home at eight years old uh, to find adventure. Uh, and he ends up, as you can imagine, he ends up orphaned in, um, where did he go? Uh, Toledo, Toledo, Spain. He was in Portugal, he ends up in Spain. He's eight years old, he's on the streets. He's an orphan now, right? Uh, this is some adventure. Uh, well, a kind man takes him in and uh, John of God ends up staying with this man uh, until he was 22 years old. He worked as a shepherd and apparently was reliable enough that uh, this man wanted him to marry uh, his daughter and take over the, the shepherds and the pasture um, later in life. Uh, but John was, was, was reluctant to do so. That's not what he wanted to do. And so um, uh, one, one night he sees this troop of soldiers passing through and so he decides he's gonna be a soldier. So he leaves behind the shepherds you know, in the middle of the night and goes and becomes a soldier. So uh, he spent several years doing this in military service and this ended almost, this almost ended his life, not that he died in battle, but he was assigned to guard a large quantity of treasure, you know, spoils of war, whatever it may be. Well, he's so incompetent at guarding this treasure that most of it gets stolen. And so he, he, he gets arraigned and he's gonna be executed, but um, I guess they have mercy on him and they simply dismiss him. So uh, he goes back uh, to being a shepherd again for a number of years. And then um, this time he decides, okay, I'm gonna give it another chance. I'm gonna try to be a soldier again. And he does, he again joins, I think this is um, uh, the, the Holy Roman Emperor at the time. Uh, so he spends 18 years. Uh, he, he would fight the Turks in one point. He would go and, and fight in France also. Uh, but he wasn't living a very good life uh, as, as a soldier. And at one point he was facing um, in battle, he was facing imminent death or capture by the enemy, and he vowed if he survived, he would change his life. So uh, he did survive, and he did change his life. He left behind the military, left behind his bad way of life, and decides he's, he's um, in his mid-40s now, he's going to go try to find his original parents. So he goes back home to his hometown, both of his parents have died, and um, so he becomes, once again, a shepherd. This is kind of this military life shepherd going back and forth. So now he, he's trying to think, what should I do? He's again tending sheep. He's been in the military a couple of times. Um, he decides, uh, I'm gonna go rescue captives in Africa, right? So I, I, I said, I was gonna change my life. I'm gonna make reforms. So he does, he decides in the middle of the night, he's just gonna go to Africa and redeem captive slaves. So he does. And he's down in, um, uh, uh, he's waiting for a ship at the port of uh, uh, Gibraltar. And while he's waiting for a ship, he meets a family. And this family are, um, he's a political exile. So he and his wife and his, cho his daughter is there. This, this man meets St. John of God. He, he's, he's been, he's been uh, uh, exiled due to intrigues in court, whatever it is. So St. John of God decides there on the port, you know what, I'm not gonna go to Africa. I'm gonna join this family. I'll be your servant. So now he changes where he's going. He's now this family servant. And as soon as they get to the, 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 the place of exile, uh, the family gets sick. So St. John of God takes care for them. Uh, not just caring for them in their illnesses, but he actually goes and gets a job to support them in their sickness. So it was, it was very, very kind of him to do that. And in fact, it just probably saved the family's life. And well, they recover from their illness and eventually the, the, the man is uh, reinstated. He's given a pardon. And so they go back from exile to Spain. So St. John of God accompanies them 
uh, back to Spain, and then he decides he's going to be a dock worker. So he starts working on the docks, unloading cargo ships by day. And when he's not working, he has taken a liking to reading uh, books, uh, mostly spiritual books, but also other things as well. And he's visiting churches at night. He's kind of developing his prayer life. So he is reformed. He's just not very responsible. So he decides um, after being a dock worker, he's going to be a book salesman. So he goes around selling uh, religious books and holy cards from place to place. Eventually he gets a little bookstore. And so now, okay, I'm going to settle down. I'm going I'm to own this bookstore and sell business books. Uh, well, then John of Avila comes through. Uh, John of Avila comes through and preaches a sermon on uh, sorrow for sin and repentance. And John of God is so overcome by the sermon that he goes to his bookstore, uh, he gives away all of his money, uh, tears up all of his uh, secular books, gives away his religious books, um, and rip, tears his clothes and sits weeping outside of his bookstore for his sins. So people think he's crazy, so they put him in, in, in a mental hospital. And so now he's there, he's been there for like over a month. Um, and John of Avila comes and, and kind of like, you know, people said he went crazy like after your sermon. So John of Avila comes and tells uh, John of God, okay, you've done enough penance. It's been 40 days. Our Lord spent 40 days in the desert. You, you know, you're, you, you, you've done your penance. So John of God kind of calms down a bit, recovers. And uh, 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 John of Avila becomes his spiritual director for some time. So John of God begins working in the hospital. He, he tends to the other mental uh, um, uh, patients. He helps out the hospital staff. And, and um, it seems that this is, this is a, a, not even say a charism, but something that he can do, right? He helped that sick family. He's helping within the hospital. So John of Avila tells him, uh, maybe you should look at starting your own hospital. Because, um, you know, I mean, he's working with other people. He doesn't work very well. He's not very reliable, but he is, he is competent. He, he does care for the poor. So John of God decides uh, one night, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna start my own hospital. I am gonna do this. So he leaves the hospital in the middle of the night and starts, um, and he founds his own hospital doing everything at once. He starts going out and caring for people. Um, he begs for supplies. He fishes driftwood out of the streams and rivers and sells it in the marketplace for, for money. And then he kind of, he rents a house and he brings poor people in. So he's just this, this, um, uh, disorganized, uh, um, energetic uh, kind of charity, you would say. So um, let's see, how does this, it continues. Eventually, uh, he's given an abandoned Carmelite monastery, and it's a hospital slash homeless shelter. And uh, people are like, they're giving him alms, but he's a troublemaker. At one point, he, he came across um, a group of, of homeless children. They were dressed in rags. So he goes them into a clothing shop and he, and he buys them all clothes, uh, but he doesn't have any money. But, but I, I will have money. So, you know, the shopkeeper wasn't too happy about that. Another time he came across a group of, a group of people who were uh, really uh, um, on the brink of starvation. Um, and so he's so overcome with a desire to help them that he goes into some random house and takes their pot of food and feeds it to the starving people. So they weren't too happy about that. Um, you know, so th this is how he is. But also at one point, uh, he hears an alarm that in, in the city, there's a, a building's on fire. So St. John, you know, drops everything, rushes to this, this burning building, and it's, it's a hospital. And he finds a group of people just kind of standing there watching the hospital. Well, he runs inside and he takes out all these sick people, right? Saves them from burning. And then he goes back inside and he starts throwing beds and mattresses because he knows how valuable they are. He's gonna use them in his hospital. And then uh, the, the townsmen bring a cannon, and I guess this building was connected to another building, and they're going to shoot the burning building off of, like, this other one. St. John says, wait, hold on. So he goes up and gets an axe and runs up on the roof and, and cuts the burning section off from the other building. And then he falls through the roof into the flames. And then he comes out full of smoke, but he's okay. So this is, this is John of God. So, uh, he, so he continues um, to, to, to work in this manner, and he's, he's in his mid-50s at this point, and he, he, was, he was sick. Um, he, um, you know, you can imagine, so let's see, he's lying down sick, um, and he hears, uh, he's still doing his hospital work, and he's gathered, by the way. By this time, he's gathered um, other people um, to help him in his ministry. And so he himself is laying sick, um, and he hears of this, this uh, there's been a big flood, and the, the flood is coming by the city, and there's a lot of driftwood. Right, that, that this water is bringing. So he gets, uh, he's sick, he gets out of bed, he goes and he's fishing this driftwood out of the water when well, one of his companions falls in, right? And so St. John of God just doesn't even think about it, jumps in afterwards to save him and ends up getting pneumonia. 
And uh, he doesn't recover from that illness, and so he does end up dying on uh, March 8th in the year 1550. And uh, as I said, he himself was 55 years old. Um, so what a, what a strange life. He's never... Was, it was so erratic. He was so just, just irresponsible, so impulsive. Um, and he never overcame this. He was impulsive to the day he died. Uh, but why is he a saint? Uh, because the companions he gathered around him would eventually found uh, the Order of the Brothers Hospitallers, which you, you might have heard of. It's not the Knights Hospitallers, different. These are the Brothers Hospitallers. Their charism is to work with the poor and sick uh, in hospitals. And this order is currently active in 40 countries and have tw has 1,200 religious members and 40,000 associates. And, and again, they, they've taken care of the poor and the sick ever since uh, they were founded in 1572. So these men who, who founded the Hospitallers were inspired by St. John of God. If he hadn't done what he had, this order wouldn't exist. You know, the, all, all this good work would never have been done. Uh, and that is how God works, right? It, it, it isn't about... Um, how could we say this? You know, God gives to everybody the talents that they have, the gifts that they have, the abilities that they have. And responsibility was not a, was not a gift that St. John of God had, right? But, but love was, and, 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 and generosity was, and, and he was willing to respond to that. Uh, and and um, there's, there's actually, I was in reading on this saying, I, um, there's a, uh, a lesson that was given at this website, and it's a dumb lesson. Like, don't do what these people say. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So here we go. Here, here's, after hearing about this life, here's what some would say as our lesson is. When you feel the urge to serve, help, or pray, do you act on it at once, or do you argue yourself out of it? Today, if you feel an impulse to do good, do it immediately, as John of God would have done, without thinking about how practical uh, it might be. Uh, don't do that, right? That, that's not good advice. I mean, yes, there is it was those, those little things like, oh, I should do this, or I should do that. Uh, but John of God's, that impulsiveness, that was not a virtue. That was a character flaw, right? And he never overcame that, just like Jero uh, St. Jerome had that, that a great anger, right? So just because people are saints doesn't mean everything they do is good and doesn't mean they have all the virtues. But it does mean that God knows what he has given us and what he hasn't given us, what he expects of us and what he doesn't expect. Uh, and very often, th that's part of sanctity, is being okay with the truth. Very often, we are distraught because, oh, I I'm not like this, or I'm not like that. I don't have this virtue. I don't have that virtue. Or sometimes, it's not even virtue. Like, people think, oh, I'm not very intelligent, or I'm not very good at this. I'm not very good at that. So what? Right? It, you don't need to be good at this or that. What you need to be good at is what God intended you to do in this life. God never intended John of God to be responsible. He says God knew that would never happen. And, and he wasn't disappointed with St. John of God. He always knew, this is who I created him to be. Now, now okay, maybe, maybe St. John of God could have done better. Maybe, um, you know, by the time he was 40 years old and he resolved to, to reform his life, maybe he had kind of set himself on a path that was irreversible. Maybe he could have been more responsible had he had a better childhood. You know, who knows? Uh, the point is, you can't change the past. All you can do is change the future. This is what I have now, and there are certain things I will never overcome but we don't know what those are. So don't be too distraught of what you don't have, but don't be lazy either. Don't say, well, I just don't have this, so I'm not even gonna try. That's not how we, how we respond. We don't know what we can accomplish, so we try our best to acquire those virtues we know are lacking. And if we don't acquire it, that doesn't mean you can't be a saint. That doesn't mean that God is disappointed with you. You should have been better at this, you should have been better at that, and God is up there thinking, oh, I'm so disappointed. No, don't think like that. That is okay to be incompetent. It is okay to fail. It is okay to suffer from a character flaw as long as you're working against it. And if you fail, blessed be God. Uh, but you never know. what you, 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 might, you might achieve that virtue. You might be able to be more responsible if you tried hard enough. And there's the other side of it. As I said, well, God made me who I am and I can't change, so why even bother trying? That's not going to work either. Um, the, the more I study about the spiritual life, the more... Um, it's kind of like God himself. God is, he's God and man. Uh, he created a, a, a virgin who's also a mother, right? God loves to put opposites together. And if once we realize that in our life, opposites can be together. You can try and try and try and fail and fail and fail and feel good about it, right? Because you tried. The spiritual life is the one place where God rewards failure. 
because he doesn't expect performance. You don't have to be excellent. You don't have to be perfect. You don't even have to be good, like good at something. You just have to, I want to do what God wants me to do, and I'm going to try my best to be holy. I don't have to be competent. I don't have to succeed. I don't have to be successful. I just have to give God what I have, and he'll do the rest. That's hard to do. It's hard to try and try and try at something and fail all the time and keep trying. That's very hard to do. But that's what love inspires us to do. Like love inspires us to keep going no matter what, because it doesn't matter to me. All this exterior stuff, success or this or that, or what other people are saying, what matters to me is, God, do you want me to do this? Okay, well, I'm gonna continue to keep doing it. No matter how dumb I look, no matter how foolish I feel, no matter how many times I fail, this is what God wants me to do. Uh, but we have to be careful. It's not what I want to do, right? It has to be what God wants me to do. And, and of course, all the, the, the way, the in, um, the surefire way to know this is God's will is things outside of my control, right? If I start feeling like, oh, my life is spinning out of control, fine. <laughs> Let it be out of control. I'm just going to do the best I, I can with what I have now. So um, all these things, right? Uh, uh, John of God, I just, he's just not very well-known saint, but I think one that everybody needs to know because he's a great consolation in those times when you feel like a failure or when you are a failure or when you have been erratic or irresponsible. You know what, St. John of God, I'm going to pray to you to uh, uh, help me keep going, not to be discouraged, but just to keep loving God. And who knows, from our failed life or, or the failed life of somebody else, maybe somebody will be inspired uh, to begin something that will last hundreds of years, like the, like the Brothers Hospitalers. Never would have existed if it weren't for St. John of God. Uh, so always do the will of God, always trust in Him, uh, and, and in, in all circumstances, just keep loving God. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.